trying to figure out, hey, am I going to be able to be a Green Beret anymore? No, am I even going to be able to have a normal life anymore? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, and Adam can give that perspective. Uh, and so we think that is what we're giving uh, the opportunity for people to start the dialogue, right? To say, okay, well, this is what they are going through. I can expect the same things. And now we have our own community, if you will, of uh, the veterans and service members that are treating, but also the wives as well, um, our, you know, the family members. So very much so, Gene, but indirectly. Right, and, and of course, you know, through your struggle, uh, you, you highlight, we highlight in your story the, the work of uh, Dr. Gordon, Dr. Mm -hmm. Mark Gordon, uh, the neuroendocrinologist yep. that's been helping out. Uh, talk a little bit about the relationship that you have with Dr. Gordon and how that's grown as your condition has improved. Yeah, uh, well, I say me and Adam both have a very uh, special relationship with Dr. Gordon, uh, Mark, as we call him. But uh, it's, it's, he's family to us. And, you know, I'm alive today because of Dr. Mark Gordon. We have over 120 veterans now, Gene, that are alive today because of Dr. Gordon. 120. That's more than when the last time we spoke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we've been trying to treat as many people as we can. So, we, yeah, we've done a lot since we talked in February. But Dr. Gordon is an incredible man, uh, it was the, is a pioneer in this field, the expert in uh, neuroendocrinology, excuse me, specifically in traumatic brain injury. And he is a very, very unique individual and has personally invested a lot of money without any fanfare to treat veterans. It's absolutely amazing. And the one thing about your story that I'm loving is that you're using your success to bring up others. And, uh, you know, let's talk a little bit about the, the Warrior Games. I mean, listen, we were mistaken for twins every now and then. We have a similar build. <laughs> you know, I, I turned down doing athletic prowess because, you know, I didn't want I wanted to leave that for something for somebody else, you know, brains and, and all that. That's actually a joke I tell all the time with me and Andrew because we look so different. I'm like, hey, we're actually identical twins. There, there you go. I, people I, I'm the third more. Absolutely right. <laughs> so talk about, uh, you know, obviously athletics and athletic achievement – part of your background growing up. Uh, how much of a full circle journey is it to be going to these games now to be competing? Pull something out of my folder. I want to whoa. show whoa, you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy there. It's, thank God this is not video. Oh, look at this. This, this is a medical is file. I know what this medical is. medical file from I, my medical evaluation board. You can see it's about three inches thick. I, I can see it. Mine, yeah, absolutely. Mine was about this much. Yeah, and we're talking about less than an inch yeah. thick. Listen, <laughs> as an attorney, I'm used to working with medical records all the time yeah. and, and going through them. It's a, it's such a, a different level of education, isn't mm -hmm. it? I mean, yeah. you have to really know how... It's like reading a different language sometimes. Yeah, it is. And to have a, a neural endocrinologist on your side to kind of translate patient to doctor mm -hmm. has got to be huge. Oh, it is. And the thing I want to drive home about this file is there's 32 rated disabilities uh, so-called so disabilities from the from the VA here. So they rated me as 100% uh, disabled. A year ago, a year and a half ago, I was having such bad migraines, double vision, balance issues. I couldn't even remember how to drive home. Uh, I had no quality of life. I couldn't even think about competing at a high level in an athletic event. And now, through the help of my family, through the help of Dr. Gordon, we were able to come out of it, come to the other side, and now we're saying we want to just live again. So we're competing at the Warrior Games for two reasons. One, to train and just to live life to the fullest. But two, to show everybody else out there who's suffering any kind of debilitating in injury, be it uh, visible or not visible, mental or physical, you can come back. You can pull yourself out. You can get the help. You can re uh, repurpose yourself and compete again in life. Whatever that means to you, that's what we that's what the Warrior Games is all about. And so it's, it's really cool because Andrew's living it and breathing it, but it's not just special and specific to him. We actually have two of the employees that we brought on in the foundation are former Army soldiers that have been affected by TBI that are on Dr. Gordon's treatment. Andrew himself is the CEO of the foundation, and I wasn't affected nearly like he was, not even a, a small degree. And I got to try my darndest to keep pace with him with where he's at now. Now, a year and a half ago, it wasn't that story. So he's gone from the depths of despair back up to the top, to the pinnacle. And he's, he's doing that in the Warrior Games, but that's happening within the foundation for the 120 veterans that are on the protocols, which is amazing. Yeah, so we're saying nothing here is exclusive to us. We are, we are uh, 
the we're magnifying what's going on at a, at a big level now. And with help from people like Eugene, that is surging and going to run rampant through the country as we heal those who need healing. Well, obviously, to reach the goals of reaching as many veterans as possible. I mean, 120 is great for the, the few months that we've been talking. We want to get that number 10 times up there very quickly. We want to ramp this up as quickly as possible. Let's talk about getting money and people involved because that's kind of my job here, right? Yeah. My, I, I'm a big believer in what you guys are doing. Uh, I never advocate for people to give money unless they want to. This is one time I'm saying, folks, open your wallets up. It's time. You know, I, I, you know, I rarely ask you guys. Warrior Angels Foundation, this is an organization I believe in. Um, my company's going to be giving money to it right after this interview. And uh, let's talk about how we can get in touch with you guys, how to get involved, social media, and all that stuff, Adam. Well, we just we had a really cool story um, that happened actually just uh, right before we met up with you. And this is part of that veteran outreach right before we get into the money. And this was a regional director from Wounded Warrior Project uh, up in Alaska reached out and contacted us. He was a former EOD, so same kind of line of work as Andrew. And I asked him how he found out about us because he was acquired about our foundation. And he said, well, I stay on top of TBI and PTS, and I'm constantly reading the latest to understand it better and help our veterans better. In these last two weeks, um, I've come across all of your stuff, and it's incredible what you guys are doing. We want to bring you guys up. We have 800 veterans that are getting together and we want to be able to offer and talk Warrior Angels Foundation with them. So this is somebody who's uh, an organization that has some bad publicity lately. We've been asked about them all the time. We do have Warrior in our name, very different organizations. But for them to come and validate what we've already seen, what the results are already showing, is incredible. So the other side of that is we're going to have so many veterans that need this, and we can't do it without the organic donations. That's how we run. That's how we operate. Yeah, and so we've set this thing up, Gene. This, uh, it, we run a business, and it is a nonprofit. We run it like a business, and our business model is immaculately uh, incredible. And the way we do it is we don't need a brick-and-mortar facility. We don't need a, to send our people to a doctor's office or any of that. So we, what we do for the process is once somebody is cleared for funding, uh, we send them a lab kit from our lab in Florida. They receive it at their physical location at their house. We send a mobile phlebotomist to their house to draw their blood. They then the phlebotomist sends that back to Florida. They're gonna uh, they're gonna run and uh, get that data, send that data to Dr. Gordon in California. He's gonna write a detailed report, send it to you via FedEx, and email it to you as well. You will then do a Skype consultation, a one on one. It's gonna go everything. Uh, that these found in, in detail so you have a really good understanding of what's going on. And then we'll talk about the protocols that we're going to uh, instill to treat the underlying condition. After that, they'll send us the invoice. We'll pay it. And so we brought world-class care to the veteran or service member wherever they're at without having to leave their home, without having to go to a doctor's office or wait in a waiting line. And we're so incredibly uh, proud that we brought that to them. Yeah, we do. We do it all through the website www.waftbi.org. That's www.waftbi.org. And from there, you can go and fill out and apply uh, for this treatment. Um, you can also find um, all the latest media and news that we've been putting out. You can find links to Dr. Gordon, his research and his study. So it's it's a wealth of information. It's for the family member. It's for the affected, and it's for those that want to get involved in support. Yeah. We have multiple ways that people can support. And I also want to say, Gene, that those are those people that are on the edge, hey, should we do it, should we not do it? I want to say we were founded and run by combat veterans, okay? If we started doing things that was not having the veterans' uh, well-being at, the, uh, at our hearts, um, we would be exposed immediately, and rightly so. We would lose all street cred, but we have incredible... Uh, relationships and street cred, so to speak, because of the way we do business. Last year, 84% of everything we took in went to go directly to treating a veteran. And again, we are challenging the status quo, status quo being the current system, which is predicated on sickness, medication, and psychotherapy by offering a superior alternative. If that's not the American way, if that's not John Wayne and July 4th and apple pie, I don't know what is. And we've had this conversation before about, 
you're treating the symptoms, not necessarily the disease. When it comes to traumatic brain injury, PTSD, your way is clearly w- working. And anything that we can do here on the show to help you guys out, yeah. uh, we'll be glad to do so. Go to www.waftbi.org for the Warrior Angels Foundation. Find out more about them. And you are guaranteed to find out more about them on this show. Guys, thanks for coming on. And we'll talk to you down the road. huh? Oh, Gene, our pleasure, yeah. brother. Thank you, Gene. Break. Hello and welcome. My name's Andre Walker, and after a couple of weeks' holiday, your weekly monologue starts right now. We were all shocked and appalled this week by the terrorist atrocity committed at Pulse Nightclub in Orlando. This week, the monologue is dedicated to the victims, their families, the American nation, and everyone who loves freedom, no matter where they are in the world. So far, we know who did the shooting, Omar Mateen but we seem unable to agree why he did it. Liberals claim he was merely a deluded homophobe rather than anti-American, 7th century, sexually repressed, camel-bothering and cowardly Islamo-fascist. By the way, I came up with that definition myself and I'm extremely proud of it. Amazingly, despite Mateen having said himself he was a follower of the Islamic State, his dad Sadiq claimed the attack had nothing to do with Islam. He even said his son wasn't a proper Muslim. And you know what the reason he said he wasn't? That little Omar didn't even have a beard. Well, listen, Sadiq. Ellen Burstyn doesn't have a beard either, and she's still a Muslim. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Thank you, Wikipedia. Isn't Burstyn great in House of Cards playing Claire Underwood's mom, by the way? Apparently, her character persuades the First Lady to get back together with the President in a cynical attempt to run for Senate. Sorry, is this even bothering to pretend to be fiction? Or is it just an historical account with all the names changed? It's starting to remind me of primary colours without the increasingly ridiculous war paint John Travolta insists on wearing on camera. It's bad, John. You've just got to get rid of it. It's really bad. If Hillary wins the election, Bill Clinton, of course, becomes the First Lady. He'll be the most manly First Lady since Hillary Clinton. Uh, hang on. Does that mean the two ugliest first ladies in history will have had sex? Regular sex, in the White House, all over the White House. It just doesn't bear thinking about, but as this is the monologue, we're going to try. Perhaps it's time, once again, for Hillary to feel the burn. This time, it's the Oval Office carpet burn that she really used to love all those years ago. Of course, Hillary and her chums are keen to curtail the Second Amendment in order to stop acts of terrorism. Piers Morgan took to Twitter to say that almost all mass shootings in America were committed with assault weapons. Well, of course, they're mass shootings. They're done with big guns. Was that ever in any dispute? 100% of baseball bat attacks are done with baseball bat, Piers. Did you know that? If that's the best analysis liberals can come up with, we're in for a very, very, very long summer. That's the monologue. Just time to announce last week's poll results. Every pollster in the country asked the British people whether they wanted to leave the EU next week, and the majority of them said yes. We all know Vote Leave uses red as its colour, so I'd like to say that that's yet another example of a red nation rising. Until next week, goodbye. Check out Andre's column at townhall.com. Check it out on Twitter at Andre J.P. Walker and read Andre's work here behind enemy lines. Now back to the show. Gene and Russ, back behind enemy lines. We want to thank Andre Walker for coming back to the show. It's been a long time coming. We're glad he's back. Uh, and and we were discussing Andre's uh, But I wanted to thank stuff. Andre great. first that... Uh, I don't think we've mentioned Hillary and Carver burn in at least six months on the show. It's, been a, it's been a while. Thank you for bringing reset, it back. reset that clock. Absolutely. Just, by the way, thank you, sir. But, but Russ has a suggestion for a segment on the show involving Andre. Go ahead and discuss that. I want to do something where Gene and I say the same exact thing and then have Andre say it and see who sounds more educated or. Or whatnot. You know what I mean? Well, exactly. For some reason, when I say things or Gene says things, it, people kind of like. Yeah, Lacking right, whatever. Off. Yeah, right, whatever. But then when Andre said something almost the same... Would have, He's would so have, distinguished. Have he sounds so smart. Uh, I want to see that. <laughs> I'm dying to see you and see what the outcome of that is. And Andre said that he is actually his idea 
and he's 100% down to and do it. And by the way, my request for next week's monologue is definitely going to be about the, the new mayor in London. Please, we...